Terry Nance, and I'm the author of God's Armor Bearer. I am going through uh, the book, God's Armor Bearer. I'm really just taking it page to page. I really feel impressed to do this. I covered so much in these books that I have not shared in my conferences and other things. I want you to get a copy of God's Armor Bearer. Get these books and reread them if you've already read them. Go over them. They're going to bless you and minister to you. This is a program that we're calling Armor Bearer Awakening. This is, it's time for an awakening in Armor Bearer. Subscribe to the channel. Get it to everyone you know. And then uh, also get the books and the material. It is time for a new Aaron and a Her to be raised up. Now, I am dealing right now with submission. I'm talking about the functions of an Armor Bearer. And in First Peter Five five. It says, "As likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves to the elders." There are no conditions to this command, except in the case of an elder who is giving directives which are in direct violation of the scriptures. I'm going to say this again. The First Peter five five. Listen to it. Likewise, you younger, submit yourself to the elders, and and the younger. The younger really deals with the body of Christ. And it's not an age limit here. It is, you've got elders who are called by God, who are spiritual elders. They're men and women who have served God for a number of years. They walk with God and they've proven themselves. You are to submit to them. There are no conditions to this command, except in the case of an elder who is trying to get you to do something that violates the scriptures. In the Bible, we have a course. We have a higher uh, uh, authority and a spiritual authority, the word of God, and we will submit to that. And that is that is situations uh, that come up, you know, when someone tells you what you can preach and what not to preach according to the scriptures. But m- the majority of the things in the local church you need to flow and submit to, and I mean, even beginning with the nursery. Kim and I, gosh, we had to believe God for children and and when our little girl was born, she only weighed three pounds. And man, she, we used to, uh, dress her in cabbage patch dog clothes. But Kim and I made the decision when it's time, she got up to five pounds and we were going to bring her into the church nursery. Now I was a senior associate. I mean, I could have, I could have asked for special things. I mean, I had a, uh, a delicate situation, but you know what Kim and I did? We put the blood of Jesus over her and said, if God can't take care of her in this nursery, you know, we can't believe that and be at peace. Then we're going to be miserable for the rest of our lives. So we just dropped her off and said, she's blessed and we'll pick her up after. And you know what? God bless that. And it's because that, you know what? We were going to submit ourselves to the rules and the regulation, whatever they wanted in the nursery. And, you know, and I didn't have to, I could have, I could have stirred up a stink, but why would I want to do that? No, I'm going to flow with the order of the house. And so that's very important for you to get. Always remember this, God will never establish you as an authority until you first learn to submit to authority. Oh man, what a statement. God will never establish you as an authority until you learn to submit to authority. Now, let's move on to another point. We must make the advancement of our leader our most important goal. And when I ask the Lord, what about my dreams and goals? What about my vision you placed in my heart? I asked the Lord the night that he gave me the revelation of armor bearer. He said to me, he said, Terry, if you'll lay down your vision and take up the vision of the house, I'll prove to you and show you, I'll cause your dreams to fulfill. And then he reminded me the very same thing that Jesus did. Jesus laid down his will and desire and took up his father and God highly exalted him. I can honestly say that God has done that in my life. Uh, the years that I've been doing this, 1982, I saw that vision. God began to birth that vision for the world uh, that I had in me in 1982. And we began to graduate students in 83, send it all, send them over in the mission field. And then in 83, the Lord spoke to me and said, you're going to be your pastor's armor bearer. Lay your vision down. Take up what I put in his heart. I'll take care of your your mission vision that I put in you. And man, and again, listen to me. You're not here to compete. You're here to complete. So the Lord is speaking this right now. And we have to see Jesus is not asking us to do anything 
He didn't do himself. He came down, he laid down his will and desire, took up his father's uh, heart and desire. So this is what we are called to do. And I know sometimes we struggle with this. And I know, man, because you feel like, well, gosh, God's giving me a revelation. I want you to stop and think about it. I got a revelation of the armor bear. I wrote that book in 1990 and that book took off. Do you not think that it wasn't a challenge in my life to just get up and leave because of the success of that book? It was a challenge. Matter of fact, it was a greater challenge to me after it was written because when I saw success, uh, and I had to just go back and submit to everything that was going on in the ministry there. And you know what? I had to live it now. I mean, I was already living it, but man, it was costing me because in my mind, the devil was telling me, get out of there. You don't have to put up with this. I mean, look at your, look at your, you start your own ministry and all this stuff. And my wife and I pray we had to put that down. And someone is struggling right now with this. And I pray for the wisdom of God in your life. Put it down. Let God promote you. He's the one and he has the perfect timing. Father, I bless the people today. I release the anointing of God in their lives. Remember, something good is going to happen to you today.